So let's start off with the big daddy of all economic events, central bank announcements. A quick refresher on central banks. What are they and what do they do? Well, central banks are independent government authorities that manage the macroeconomic objectives, namely growth, employment, inflation, and consumption of a country or group of countries by conducting monetary policy, regulating the banking sector of that nation, acting as lender of last resort to those banks, coordinating and cooperating with other central banks in times of crisis, providing services such as research and economic indicators, as well as managing the country's reserves. Central banks are public institutions whose heads are appointed by the government. They're not profit-making enterprises, so any money they make from their securities holdings or from interest charged are returned back to the government or rolled into the country's reserves. More on the reserves in a couple of slides. Some of the largest and most influential central banks are listed on this table, and you'll often see them in the front pages of economic news. They include the Fed, which is the Federal Reserve Bank system of the U.S., the ECB, European Central Bank, the BOE, Bank of England, BOJ, Bank of Japan, and so forth. The last one on the list, the IMF, is actually a supranational agency and is known as the Central Bank to Central Banks. Going back to one of the key responsibilities for a country's central bank, many countries that have a fixed exchange rate, large natural reserves, and or large surplus capital accounts accumulate sizable amounts of foreign currency reserves. Some countries, such as China, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and Norway, have foreign currency holdings totaling trillions of U.S. dollars. You might wonder what all this foreign currency reserves are used for. First of these is FX intervention, to maintain a stable foreign exchange rate into and out of the domestic currency. If a central bank keeps their currency artificially low, they end up having to print local currency to satisfy excess demand, thereby taking in foreign currency. The opposite holds true. For more details on the foreign exchange systems that countries use, I invite you to take our course on FX fundamentals. Second purpose would be for maintaining liquidity and confidence in the local markets. Some nations maintain large reserves to provide the local citizens with confidence in the local financial markets and their deposits at the local banks. Third purpose of foreign currency reserves we see are to fund external obligations and domestic infrastructure. Some countries also use their reserves as strategic investment vehicles to bolster their local economies, but also as means to further economic or diplomatic ends. Given the trillions of U.S. dollar equivalents that central banks have to invest, they are considered one of the most important client groups for global financial institutions to service in fixed income, equities, FX, commodities, as well as alternate investments, such as hedge funds. They also have the strictest and most professional investors in the market as their actions may distort these markets. I was very fortunate in my career in capital markets to be directly responsible for covering this key group of clients for almost 20 years, so I have a good understanding of what they look for when investing their reserves. Key considerations would be, for them, liquidity. As mentioned earlier, foreign reserves are so huge that investing or divesting them can lead to market distortions. So foreign currency reserve managers look for investment products that have ample liquidity. Capital preservation. As all of the world's currency reserves are public funds, reserve managers look to take very little unnecessary risk, choosing safer investments such as very high-grade bonds or blue-chip stocks. Capital gains. Lastly, the returns the reserve managers get are compared to external fund managers. As a matter of fact, Many central banks also award mandates to large asset managers to invest their money. Hence, central bank reserve managers also have pressure to produce gains to beach their benchmarks. You may also hear about entities called sovereign wealth funds. They're not the same as central banks, but rather were created because holdings of foreign currency reserves in some countries had increased so much that they needed to diversify investments into non-traditional or alternative assets such as hedge funds, private equities, infrastructure and real estate, as well as direct investments, which mean equity ownership into companies. Examples of sovereign wealth funds include Singapore's GIC, Norway's oil fund, and Abu Dhabi's ADIA.
While still 100% government owned, these entities do not have any of the regulatory, monetary policy, nor lender of last resort responsibilities of their central bank siblings. Hence, many sovereign wealth funds act like typical buy side managers, hiring the best and the brightest fund managers and paying wages in line with the private sector. So let's go back to central banks and discuss what some may argue is their primary responsibility, that being to formulate and steer the macroeconomic policies of a country or region. Some of the ways they do this are changes in the policy rate. As we talked about in our fixed income fundamentals course, policy rates are short term rates that help central bankers control the speed of the economy by changing the cost of borrowing. We'll cover off more of this mechanism in a few slides. Currency valuations. As many countries operate pegged or crawling FX policies, central banks determine when and by how much to move FX rates or ranges. Policy changes. Central banks also aim to impact the economy through policy changes that may loosen or tighten bank lending guidelines or by increasing or decreasing regulation of financial institutions or even through how freely central banks provide liquidity to their member institutions. Additionally, they provide information to the marketplace by releasing central bankers' speeches, press conferences, meeting minutes, and testimonies to other government bodies, surveys of sentiment from their country or region, and detailed economic research from the central bank's own economists on a variety of topics. Market participants and economists go over all central bank events and releases with a fine-tooth comb to try and glean any insight on future actions.